So we're going to talk about having a good routine. Like what kind of good routine? What do you think a good routine is? Well, I think a good routine has to include consistent sleep and consistent exercise. But those are things that I've never had, so <laughs> I just need <laughs> yeah. to be the one to tell you that. Um, well, first, you're supposed to have a routine. Apparently, having a routine is significantly better than having no routine. I agree. <clears throat> Anything that you can judge off and improve. We saw a motivational video. It wasn't very motivational. It was not very motivational. It was kind of depressing. <laughs> it was super, super depressing. It was pretty much talking shit to me. <laughs> <clears throat> you know, like... Yeah. At times, the uh, motivational videos on YouTube actually become a little bit demotivating when it's like the vo the video is too focused on certain things. Mm -hmm. Like specifically that you're the one who is failing at everything. Yeah, but that's... I need a motivational video that just gets me to work harder than I'm already working. Like, give you facts or something? Yeah, but when the video is, like, three minutes of, get off your ass and do something, I'm like, I'm doing something! Hmm. <laughs> that sounds, it sounds like you just need to switch to, like, some lo-fi music. You're right, man. I agree. <laughs> <coughs> Pardon me, everybody. Uh, the lo-fi hip-hop mixes are just incredible. Yeah. I can't get enough of them. They're very, they're definitely really good. I like uh, Nourish and Chilled Cow. Those are my favorite uh, channels mm -hmm. on YouTube. It's also great because they they stream live all day, and then uh, you can go on there and talk in the chat group. Mm -hmm. Do you ever talk in the chat group? Oh yeah. Do you really? Yeah, if I'm just bored. I don't. Like, I don't do that. Like. I I have pretty bad insomnia sometimes, and so sometimes I'll be in there in the middle of the night, and so I'll go. I'll either do that. These are my go tos if I have insomnia and there's, I don't want to do anything else. I don't want to write or read or play video games or go for a walk or anything else, but I can't sleep. Uh -huh. I'll either go to the lo-fi channel and then talk in the, in the chat group, but there's you know there's probably like a hundred people there. There's probably like a thousand people watching. There's probably a hundred participating in the chat group, and really only like half a dozen people actually talk much. Uh huh. Or excuse me. I'll go to the ISS live feed. And what is that? It's International Space Station. <laughs> and it's just a view of Earth, a camera pointing down at Earth as the ISS orbits around. And that has a chat group. <laughs> hey, I can see myself. <laughs> no, you can't, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> well, those are chill people. They all. Everyone's always chiming in where they are, what time it is. Uh, 2 a.m. from China. Send nudes. <laughs> <laughs> Classic internet. <laughs> Lol. Raffle copter. Man, the world's such a crazy place. It's such a weird place. I haven't seen a lot of those, like raffle copter and stuff like that. Well, those are going out of fashion. Yeah, they're going really out of fashion. What's the most? <clears throat> what's the most up to date stuff? I don't know. I don't know. LMAFAO. Nah, that's old. That's that's our high school days. I would say it's like wrecked or something like that. Maybe. But it's spelled with a K, R E K T, right? Yeah. I'm waiting for the next generation to do something huge and <laughs> and like our generation have already lost their opportunity to be awesome. We've been pretty awesome. Yeah, our generation has done everything. Yeah, literally. Uh, it was all us, Armand. It was <laughs> all job. us. <laughs> Good work. Yeah, yeah there you go. fist pound. <laughs> we singly handed. Uh, Facebook, Google, all that shit. Is us. YouTube. <clears throat> you think they're just going to pump some content into YouTube and all that? Just feed us more? Or they're going to start something new? They've got a beautiful system set up, or at least they did before they fucked it all up. Oh, we should get virtual reality setups. Jesus, you know, 
I don't know, man. I, I think of virtual reality the same way I think of smartphones. You remember me in high school? You hated smartphones. Well, I didn't hate them. I just knew that they were the beginning of a whole generation of technology. And if you buy the first generation, it's garbage. <clears throat> so, but it's an introduction. You get the first on, hands-on feel of it. I remember when our friend in high school got the first iPhone. Yeah. And it was cool, but it was incredibly basic. And there, there wasn't very much you could do with it. That was back when there were basically no apps. <laughs> like, no apps exist. I didn't know what an app was. Yeah. <clears throat> How did you get this on there? You had to con- connect it to the computer and BitTorrent or some shit? No, no. You just download it from the App Store. Anyway. Excuse me. VR is the same way. I mean, it was super cool, though. VR, you give that in like another five years, and then you'll be able to probably spend less money and get a higher quality system. And so far, the only games I've seen that look good are like those games where you stand in one place and you shoot like zombies or some shit that come at you. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I wanted to get to Player One, and I'm buying it. Player Which One status? Player One? Oh, yeah. Uh, Ready Player One. Ready Player One? That movie? I completely agree. I think it'll be there in 10 years. Little joysticks to move around and look around, and that's all you need. I mean, hell, I'm hoping that in 10 years they have a thing where you just put on a hat and it reads what you want. You can control the computer with your mind. They already have, like, really simple setups like that, where people control a mouse on a desktop and uh, with their mind. I remember seeing that in high school. It was for, like, you know... Uh, Sleep studies or something? No, no. <clears throat> it was for people who, um, like, lost control of their body. Like, they're paralyzed. Yeah, it's Stephen Hawking's. Uh, Pretty sure he has he, the thing that reads his brain. Yeah, probably. He probably he has sure? some crazy things like that. No, no, this is a perfect opportunity to Google something. We just don't have a computer <laughs> in front of us. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if he had it. I thought he just types it in. Anyway, the point is, it's like a smart autocorrect. That technology that reads people's brains should be commodified in the next decade or two, and then it will be going into all sorts of things. It'll be going into, <laughs> and then you can Google what you're everything. thinking. <clears throat> I mean, or it will just be Google and the answer will be shot into your brain before you even consider the action of Googling. Like the moment that you're curious about something, all the information for that floods in. But, you know the problem is? I feel like the problem is you, you're like not even excited about this technology. You're just like... I'm super excited. But you don't buy any of it. No, I just wait a long time. I'm just stubborn. <clears throat> like, I was in no rush to get a, a smartphone. That's why I waited, like, six years. And I, I got a nice Galaxy. Mm-hmm. And it was fucking amazing. It is amazing, isn't yeah. it? But I'm I'm super glad I didn't buy one of those fucking first-generation iPhones. It's just a fucking heavy piece of glass in your pocket that doesn't do anything. Uh, I'm not attacking you that you're not, like, tech-savvy. Oh, just yeah, like... yeah, that's not what I meant. But I am excited. I just, I understand that the forefront of new technology is usually not very high quality. So it's super high quality for that time, though. <clears throat> but that's not that doesn't interest me. Or you just don't like it that it's that time of commodification that. Even... I'm in no I'm in no rush to play virtual reality. I would rather you... ch- check once a once a year, or once every two years. Look at some videos of the most recent stuff. Look at what it looks like. Look at the quality of the games, and then eventually, when when I look at it, when I check, and I think, wow, this is so advanced. It looks so much looks like so much fun. And I really want it, then I'll get it. Hmm. So you're waiting for that apex of... Not the apex, but <laughs> when it hits a curve where it's so advanced that that it's it's no longer a question of like, oh, I wonder if this would be fun. Like, I'm not up to date. What, what do you think the new one is going to be? Is it going to be virtual reality? Well, here's the biggest problem. We don't have any way to move in the world, in the virtual world, other than, like, joysticks. Yeah. So you need to either be standing on, like, an omnidirectional treadmill where Mm -hmm. you can move in all directions, Mm -hmm. or you need to be able to, like, think and move your character with your mind. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. But until they solve one of those problems, you're basically just going to be standing in one place, which is what all the virtual realities I've seen are. You're, like, like, in a car, or you're... In a chat room. On a roller coaster, or you're just standing on a hill shooting arrows or something like that. Have you seen the chat room one, though? Are you walking around the chat room or something? Yeah. Never seen that. Yeah, there's one like that. It's pretty cool. It's just not that exciting. <laughs> I'm not the best typer. I probably have, like, 20 words per minute. Well, just think about, like, what you can do in World of Warcraft. Yeah. Compared to that chat room game. <laughs> I can do so much more World of Warcraft. When the virtual reality can hand, hand me a game of the same quality as, like, a Bethesda production or a Blizzard production... 
then I'm into virtual reality. Hmm. But for now, it's just like the tip of the iceberg. They made holograms, right? That's not even new. That's not even fancy anymore. Mm, I don't think so. I don't think holograms are commodified yet. Because, like, do you remember when they had that concert and they did the Tupac hologram? I was going to mention that, yeah. Yeah, that's like the hologram that everyone references because it was so high quality. Yeah. But that was using pretty old technology and it, it only works because it was up on top of a dark stage and they could have lots of smoke coming up and stuff like that. Like, you wouldn't be able to have Tupac here in the living room sitting on the chair. Yeah. <clears throat> and so we don't have, like, high quality holograms whose concert was that no idea <laughs> Snoop Dogg was in it I think who knows again another easy Google search yeah don't worry people in the future we'll be doing um, long distance podcasts and we'll have computers available yeah we're gonna Google so much <laughs> <laughs> take turns Googling things I don't know. How many how many how many percentage is that, did I say that right? What percentage? What percentage do you think you've seen of the internet? Oh my god. I don't know a number small enough to give you an answer. Zero point zero 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 zero. I mean just continue on probably. Well they say that like, 99% of the internet is the dark web. I'm not counting that. What? That is the internet. You're not counting that. So what are you counting? Just, like, the three YouTube channels that you watch? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How much have I seen of those channels? Yeah. Like, what... Like, after I leave, what are you going to Google? Or what are you going to YouTube? What are you going to watch? Tonight? Yeah. Shit. I'll, I'll probably keep watching Friends. I've been binge-watching Friends. <laughs> you... <laughs> I'm about to finish the third season. <clears throat> I'm terrified of my Netflix. Netflix not working anymore when I get to China. I'm terrified of it. <laughs> Having to, I have nothing against YouTube. I love YouTube. But uh-huh. YouTube being your only source of entertainment? Yeah, it's, man, it's brutal. It is. I have like 200 subscriptions. and Again, it's good content, but I want a, a quality production show, produced show mm-hmm. at, at some point. You know, I was listening to the radio, and uh, that's actually a thing, a, a spike in the nostalgia trends, like Netflix, and uh, a lot of people were going back to, like, their roots of interests. Netflix was one of them, like, old school shows, old school brands, old school music, and that was a spike of, spike in the trending uh, section. Mm. Well, stuff is pretty cyclical, right? What do you mean? Like trends come back around. Yeah, they always fashion come, comes back around. They always come back. Oh, they're always relevant, almost. Right? I don't know shit. <laughs> I don't know anything about trends or fashion or any of that bullshit. Pop culture, whatever. No, I'm just saying, like, I've done my best to ignore all that stuff. Really? It feels like, you know, like, this is the same reason why I was never involved with YouTube, or, uh, Facebook in high school. And mm. still not, and never have been. It just feels like such a, such an intense waste of time. Hmm. There's a lot of funny stuff. Like, there's apps. What, you look at memes? No, there's, like, the people share videos. And so you're looking at funny videos? Funny videos. So why aren't you on YouTube? It's, pra- it's practically like YouTube. Yeah, but YouTube's better. Well, yeah, but they're getting it from YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> so what the fuck? <laughs> it's the same thing. So it's just fed to you. So you see what I mean? It's it's just such a shocking waste of time. If I'm going to waste my time with cat videos, I'm just going to go straight to the source and go to YouTube. It's not We're going to just... get it pure fucking sh- right into the vein, Armand. <laughs> YouTube. Uh. Yeah. No. You go to YouTube and you just type Drugs aren't C-A-T. cool. Kids, same school. <laughs> cat. Lower t- lowercase c. No. I mean, it's not just cat videos. There's like, trend. if you want to stay up to date with what people are watching, there's trendy videos. Uh, trendy and trending videos. I don't have time for that shit. <laughs> well, you don't talk to anybody over here. Yeah, well, I mean, like, I just I never had any interest. 
they're they're funny enough funny videos enough it's like buzzfeed and <sighs> stuff like that it's definitely not worth your time that's how i think it the amount of time that people in high school spent on facebook was shocking how people could spend like an entire day on facebook just looking at other people's profiles it, i never got it i never understood i still don't if you guys have some funny videos or stuff like that post it on the comments let's let's uh <laughs> let's view them yeah any cat videos i'll watch those yeah funny cat videos anything about video games sports esports yeah esports definitely sports esports <laughs> sports esports it's a tongue twister uh, all right i'm on what right. what about foxes how many foxes could you f- take in a fight we already covered coyotes and bears this guy's like <laughs> it's the ghost don't worry about it <laughs> uh the fox is small it's like the size of a big cat foxes don't scare me okay so like nor what, do 200 cat? pound like five brown foxes? bears five foxes you think you could kill five foxes yeah maybe ten if you were stuck in a desperate situation, oh yeah, you we're talking f- about you. You're in an elevator made of lava, and you, we drop the foxes in, and the survivor gets to leave the elevator. Yeah. <laughs> you know, whatever situation you need to imagine, but you and the fox are both absolutely ruthless, bloodthirsty. Foxes aren't that scary if I was in a survival situation. All right. So how many, Armand? How many? Five probably would be the max. Five. Yeah, they're, they're little annoying little creatures. Too small. Coyote? I don't know. Coyotes are like big ass dogs. Probably no, like they're not big ass dogs. They're like one. a small dog. I don't know, man. What about what about one big dog? Dogs are easy. Like a hundred pound pit bull is easy. The pit bulls are pretty badass. Yeah. You think you're gonna punch it? You're, it's definitely, gonna, you're it's definitely, definitely not going to hurt it with a punch. No, yeah. Definitely not. Am but, I going to survive? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's that's how I would see it as well. I think I would win, but I'd, I'd be fucked up. Yeah. You'd survive, though. Yeah. You feed it one arm, and then you I don't know, get on top of it and break its ribs or whatever, choke it out, start breaking its legs. Like, It's just a small animal at the end of the day. It's only a 100-pound animal. I think that... My girlfriend's 100 pounds. <laughs> a little bit less. <laughs> and just a 200 pound brown bear, right? Brown oh, bear? The bear would kill the shit out of you. Wow. It would kill you so hard. A 100, 150 pound brown uh, black bear would kill you and me and Baker and Alex. Wow. If the four of us together fighting it unarmed, it would kill all four of us. No problem. What if we had like baseball bats? Probably still wouldn't help, cause they're just so un- it's just all muscle. They're so fucking tough. Hundred fifty pounds. I've seen a video of a small black bear, probably like hundred fifty pounds, uh, fighting a tiger, and a bear won. I saw another one where a same size bear was taking on a female lion. Mm-hmm. Bear won. When they fight the ti- the cat definitely wins the engagement. But then the cat tries to break away and run away, but they're in like a little cage, and the bear just keeps going forward, keeps going forward, and the bear doesn't seem to take any damage from like the, the tiger's claws and the fucking cat's teeth and shit. That but was the, in the news, the, wasn't it? But the tigers and the lions keep getting more and more bloody and more tired. Hmm. The bear wins. <clears throat> I don't remember where I saw that. Some fucked up internet shit. Hmm. It was on YouTube though. Anything with legs and arms. It's pretty badass. The bears are just it's so awesome having powerful. a thumb and pinky. Mm-hmm. It's so useful. Their claws are so powerful, they just go right through wood like it's nothing. Like they just take chunks out of a tree. I've seen it before. I've seen these giant giant claw marks in trees from grizzly bears. Yeah. I mean they they dig through the tree like you like a human being stick their hand into jello. What experience would you need to survive that kind of thing? There's nothing that helps you survive, I don't think. Would you choose like st- you're a huge bodybuilder, or... Oh, like just... what body type? Yeah. Shit, maybe a bodybuilder. Just lots of mass. You know? They're when... To give you an idea of how big these animals are... Mm-hmm. It's pretty common for people 
after they've been attacked, mauled by a grizzly bear, uh-huh. their bodies are found and they do an autopsy to see, you know, what damage the bear did. Uh-huh. And they'll conclude that the bear bit them around the torso and the bear's teeth came together. His mouth closed wow. around the person. Jesus, that's huge. To give you an idea of how gigantic... That's not a 150 t- pound... No, no, we're talking about a grizzly bear, like a 1,000 pound grizzly bear. That's the whole fuck yeah, that. 800 pound <laughs> grizzly bear or something like that, yeah. Fuck that, exactly. You think you can survive a shark attack? No, certainly not. You get in the water, it's all bets are off, man. <laughs> Fucking anything will kill you in there. Poke the poke the eyes, man, and you'll be safe. Oh my god, you're so incredibly fucked. <laughs> Humans are so entirely out of the element in the water. Yeah. I mean, imagine like ancient humans. Of course, they 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 think that there's sea monsters out there. You know, when you're, even when you're a modern human and you know what's out there, there's still monsters. It doesn't change that there's a giant fish trying to kill you. If the theory is true, of we came out of the water, there's we didn't. There's a good reason why we never went back. <laughs> we escaped. We it escaped. wasn't evolution. It was it was fucking survival. Yeah, exactly. We were fleeing. Yeah, we fled. <laughs> oh, would you ever go back? Would you be caught in a deep blue deep, situation? Deep blue sea. Yeah, deep blue sea With situation. Intelligent sharks. Yeah. <laughs> would would I you ever? <laughs> I don't. I hope not, man. I hope I'm not that stupid to ever go to the laboratory where they're making super sharks. Hmm. A hundred f- <laughs> feet floor down uh, yeah. lab. What are we about? Four hundred miles away from land. <laughs> Great. <laughs> My kind of place. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Well, there's only one radio to call for help. Fantastic. I hope it breaks. Great. Can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, uh, would you rather? <laughs> <laughs> no, these are plausible questions, man. There's like different scenarios that people have to face in different parts of the world. One of the scariest videos I ever saw on YouTube was this guy riding a bike. And mm-hmm. I don't know, I guess they're wild dogs or something like that. Yeah. It was somewhere, it looked like it was Eastern Europe or something. Yeah. But he was kind of on a on a dirt path, but you could see there's like a town around him. And he's like two or three dogs come up on the path and start barking at him, and a fourth dog, and a fifth dog. And like and he may he has to get off his bike and kind of go ah, ah like trying to scare the dogs off. Mm. And then he's wearing a GoPro and he kinda of turns around and three more dogs come up behind him and he turns back around, there were five dogs, and now there's eight. Now then now there's like fifteen dogs all around and he picks his bike up and he's like swinging it in all directions, screaming for help, help me. Yeah, man. It's, it's like fifteen or twenty dogs around him. Dude, Dude. They, they, you'd have no chance. Yeah, no, so nobody has over. a chance actually. Yeah, I mean shit. You need a gun, there's nothing else. I, I wouldn't feel as comfortable with a sword in that situation. Yeah, lucky with a gun. Well, I'm hoping that I could kill one or two and they would run away. But yeah. if, and if they don't care about each other, then you're still dead even with a gun. Yeah, no, totally. Even if you play a Glock 17, he's still got like five more dogs. <laughs> what is that, an automatic one? <laughs> no, it's just the 17 <laughs> shots. Yeah. Maybe they make Glock 19s now, I think. But Are that those Glocks with a drum? No, that, that's a beta mag. That's like 100 rounds. <laughs> that's yeah, what yeah. I would need. That's, that, I, would, I would take one of those. Two of those. Get away, dogs. <laughs> oh man, see, the dogs attacking people videos are actually pretty infuriating. Um, I've only ever seen one that was like, I saw this one video that was like a, a compilation. Of, mm-hmm. it, it was like the video was like pets attacking people. Yeah. And a huge section of it was dogs attacking people. Mm-hmm. And I didn't expect it to be as hardcore as it was. Like, people were getting fucking ripped apart, though. It was pretty fucked up. Wow. But what infuriated me is how passively people defend themselves. I mean, like, a situation would be like a dog runs down the street and bites somebody's ankle. And the person just flops on the ground and goes, oh! And then they just start, like, kicking their leg. Like, get away from me, dog! Like, not doing anything to actually protect themselves. Just, mm. just getting mauled. He probably over. knows at that point that he's done. No, man. I mean, he over and over and over again, all these videos, everyone's so passively... No one's attacking back. No one's, like, trying to attack the dog. Everyone's just defense. Even when people came to this guy's help, the video that I'm talking about, mm. none of them were even trying to attack the dog. They were all, like, trying to pull him away, like, playing tug-of-war with the dog. Mm. 
It's so infuriating. It, at the end of the day, it's a small animal. Go kick it in the chest. But then again, I've never fought a dog, so who knows? Maybe that does nothing. We respect animals and such. Yeah. But we're human activists first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm on team human first and foremost. You need to show me that video. We got a book here about the dinosaurs. They're all dead. All right. If I saw a dinosaur tomorrow, I'd shoot him in the fucking face. <laughs> oh my god, the last Tyrannosaurus Rex. You know, <laughs> nope, dead now. You know why they're extinct? Because some caveman's friend was like, how many dinosaurs do you think you take? <laughs> yeah, right. How many velociraptors do you think you well, take? Well, let me show you. Well, it depends. Do I have like a wooden spear or a stone spear? What would you need? Mm, an asteroid? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I got the thing right here. It's an asteroid. Look oh, these the... little tiny ones are the. Those are vicious, though. Yeah, but they're like this big. Oh, he's... they would rip you apart, though. He, he's pointing to. Do you remember in? I think it was the second Jurassic Park, or the, was it the first one? Probably all of them. Where the the mean guy, the mean bad human with the with the cattle prod. Yeah. He gets separated from the other humans in the jungle, and he like uh, gets lost on the river. He's like walking down the stream. Yeah. And all those little tiny. Uh, dinosaurs, they're like eight inches tall. They all attack him and gang up on him and they rip him apart. But there's like a hundred of them in the movie. Yeah, you'll never survive. No. But these are dinosaurs. Against right? like a hundred of them? Probably not, no. One velociraptor killed a shit out of a million humans. I mean. How many velociraptors do you think you take? <laughs> <laughs> alright, alright. How many people do you need to take down a velociraptor and what equipment? At least spears, at the very least. And I would say two people at least. I'd say I'd say fifty unarmed people can take a velociraptor. Just and then like, they jump an arm like zombies, like complete disregard with yeah. to the health. Like how are you gonna kill it? Like and choke it out? Rabies and what's, your, what's your plan to hurt it? How do you hurt it? Just go kick it like a soccer ball. It's not. They wouldn't even <laughs> feel it, Armand. That thing's like an eight foot tall bird. It's that thing's rock solid. I it's bet somebody or nobody. I bet you'd throw a punch a at cave. its ribs and break your hand. Just grab its tail. Everybody grab its tail. Everyone grab on the tail so I can't move. <laughs> Make it too heavy. Yeah. Weigh it down like like uh, lions do. Man, it would be. I think it would kill all one hundred people with those I giant. Said 50. Oh, you said fifty. Yeah. I think it kill all fifty people with those giant hand claws and those foot claws, the giant toenail, and then it's got teeth as well. It'd be killing people like two at a time. Maybe there is a good reason why people run in those movies. <laughs> yeah. Well, they have guns in those movies, which is ridiculous, because they would just turn and shoot these fucking things. Yeah. What if we had... We... <sighs> dinosaurs against guns? Dinosaurs yeah. lose 100% of the time. <laughs> Jesus Christ, are you kidding me? You could take antique guns from World War One and kill an infinite amount of dinosaurs. You would... You wouldn't even be bothered by having dinosaurs in this world, would you? <laughs> like, <laughs> You'd probably eat it for dinner. <laughs> like, if France had concocted some super weapon where they could, like, spawn Tyrannosaurus Rexes on the battlefield in World War One, it wouldn't have helped. <laughs> it would have gotten mowed down by machine guns. <laughs> <laughs> we neglected the fact that if Nazis had it, they'd have just put armor on it. <laughs> Armored Tyrannosaurus Rex Nazis? Yeah. You know, that could be a problem. I I still think a tank would beat a Tyrannosaurus Rex pretty oh, easily. trip it and just run, over, run it over. Or just shoot it. That's <laughs> it. But you don't even have to shoot it. It can't hurt you. It has, it has teeth. It's not going to hurt a tank. Yeah, this one's like super scared. It's like, oh, no, the page is like just on the front line of the <laughs> World War Two, pointing at him. He's like, oh, I know something's really bad. <laughs> That's going to happen. We're looking at a dinosaur, a fold-out book by Rand McNally, illustrated by Steve Kirk. That's probably like a 20-year-old book right there. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> book. Hey, man, I think that people, though, in groups with spears can take out just about any animal. If you give people fire as well, f torches and spears, <coughs> a group of humans can take out any animal. But you need that's those are that's technology a spear and dude we've had that technology since almost day one <laughs> fire and and sharpened objects is like do you know there's um pale, there's not paleontologists those anthropologists I think mm -hmm. 
Or is it paleontologists? I don't know. Pal- don't know. Paleontologists study dinosaurs and anthropologists just study the whole pattern of human behavior. Which one studies great apes? I don't know. Anyway. Zoo- Zoologists? <laughs> <laughs> Some fucking expert dude. Some people will think that uh, gorillas and chimpanzees right now are going into the Stone Age. Because mm-hmm. there's evidence that they're using better tools and it's... And, using tools is becoming more and more a part of their society. I think we should uplift them. Uplifting means giving technology or, like, making a species smarter. Mm-hmm. I think, like, I would do this. This would, would be one of my crazy things if I was a tr- crazy billionaire guy like Jeff Bezos. Mm-hmm. I'd crack off a billion dollars, <laughs> hire a team of master uh, uh, fucking... Animal people, animal experts, or whatever. Yeah. Hire a team of uh, sign language experts, and then try to develop an entire community, an entire chimpanzee community, where they can communicate with sign language at a at a high level. God, like you, Coco the gorilla. You'd start a revolution that nobody needs. <laughs> <laughs> it's just for funsies. Planet of the Apes. That's how Planet of the Apes yeah, but starts. but we're not giving them guns or anything. Jeez. <laughs> they can already use it can, guns. It can never go wrong, Armand, okay? There's nothing that can go wrong. It's all going to be okay. Just sign the documents. <laughs> you know what they say. Every bad thing started because of somebody thinking that it's... Uh, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm just going to disregard that. <laughs> <laughs> this is, that's you right now. You're doing nothing like that. Uh, <laughs> I think this it'll be okay this time, though. Do you think that's a good idea, though? Wouldn't that be cool? Starting an ape revolution? Nah, just make a make one tribe really intelligent. I would I would ask you to isolate yourself in an island first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can go to an isolated island, and you can nuke the shit out of the island if it gets out of hand. Let me put it this way: they're not going to be flying fighter jets over Washington D.C. anytime soon. It's like they're going to learn how to use a jet ski and they're going to come to New York. A jet ski. And multiply it. <laughs> and multiply. Start buying up all the real estate. Housing is going to go through the roof. We're going to get into the bubble. Go into a recession. Goddamn monkeys. <laughs> they're going to learn all of it. <laughs> Banana equals more? What? <laughs> <laughs> 300 new banana IPOs opened on the stock market today. Yeah, man, I think that would be a good idea. I think that was a horrible idea. <laughs> Just for our safety as a human race. We're safe enough. We might be too safe, I think. But. Till next time. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> until next time when the human race is over. And <laughs> All I'm saying is it's a good chimpanzees use. Chimpanzees are taking yeah. over. You know so, who to blame. Yeah, it's a good use of a <laughs> billion <Ghostbusters>. dollars. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you for listening. Like, share, subscribe, comment, or don't. This has been another podcast with Brian Arma. Take care.